I'm Eben Britton. And I'm Nate Jackson. And this is the Mindful Warrior. Last week, I got a call from a current NFL team doc. And, you know, he basically said, Eb, I'm really interested in educating myself on cannabis and CBD. And I feel like you're a guy that I should talk to about it. I'm going to be out in L.A. next week. I'm uh, coming to a health summit with Mike Tyson. Iron motherfucking Mike. Another edition of the Mindful Warrior. I'm Eben Britton. Here with me, as always, is my brother Nathan Jackson. How are you, my dude? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm pretty good. It's June one. Uh, Isn't that a trip? Yeah, man. Man, it keeps on rolling. June one. We're sitting here in the studio. We got Gerard Bauer with us. What's up, Jed? What's happening, guys? You Jed. Know. You know, life. We also got Gandalf the Grey sitting at my feet like an obedient little pup. What's up, Gandy? Gandy. Didn't Beautiful. even move a muscle. We, we also have a, a guy in the studio with us today. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to participate too much because he had a, a mouth wound last <laughs> night. But uh, you want to introduce yourself, Jay? Just tell the audience who you are, why you're here. I'm John Stewart. I'm here <laughs> to hang out with these guys. Yeah. And learn about how this pod comes to fruition fruition full disclosure john is my manager mm, that too and uh we met because he worked at caa when i came into the nfl and uh, my agent tom was with caa and john was really my my main man dude took care yeah. of me nice Ooh. And and I guess uh, so. You're you're in town for a more specific reason, which we are going to get into in a little bit, um, involving cannabis in the NFL. Something we talk about often um, on the show, and the convergence of the two in a really cool way. Over the last week, Eben has been spearheading a, a, a cool initiative. Um, but before we get into that, you guys, we got another edition of Book Club. It's going to be led by Jed Bauer. Jed, take it hey, away. Hey, everybody. I got a book for you. <laughs> Have I got a book for you? This is a little bit different. This is a fiction book. Ooh. It's a satirical science fiction book. Probably not a lot of people who are listening have touched on this. It's called The Hitchhiker's Guide Ooh, to the Galaxy. Ooh. Sick, Jed. Sick. And it's, uh, like I said, it's a satire of science fiction. It's about a guy who gets sucked off the earth kind of reluctant <laughs> sucked up the earth hey man I sucked <laughs> kind up kind of reluctantly and uh, he ends up having a lot of adventures throughout the universe on some fun spaceships and meets some aliens but it's re- it's very humorous it's uh, humor with a U because it's British <laughs> <laughs> so if you like Monty Python you'll really love this but even if you don't you'll probably still like it because it's it's fun it's silly yeah. Uh, it's very absurd. If you're a fan of absurd things, you will enjoy it. But I'm going to read a couple things, a little, a couple of pieces from you to give you the flavor of the book. And mm. this is from... Give us that flavor. Flavor and What is it? The intro, like the very first page. Far out in the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of the galaxy lies a small, unregarded yellow sun. Orbiting this at a distance of roughly 98 million miles is an utterly insignificant little blue-green planet. This planet has, or rather had, a problem, which was this. Most of the people living on it were unhappy for pretty much all the time. (laughs) Many solutions were suggested for this problem, but most of these were largely concerned with the movements of small green pieces of paper, which is odd because on the whole, it wasn't the small green pieces of paper that were unhappy. (laughs) <laughs> and that's the beginning there. Very British. Yeah, very very British. I could probably read it in a British accent. Yes. And make it a little nicer. So yeah, this guy gets sucked off the planet and sucked <laughs> off. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying it. Sucked <laughs> off the planet. It's pretty funny. But yeah, he's very reluctant. He just wants to go home and have a glass of tea. But instead, he just gets sucked into all these adventures. 
constantly being sucked. <laughs> well, in the movie, in the movie though, that's an accurate description of yeah. how it gets played. I mean, yeah. how it looks. He's not. He's not happy about uh, you know journeying through the stars, if you will. Yeah, you're saying in the movie he gets he's a reluctant <laughs> traveler. He gets sucked off the planet. Yeah, yeah. sucked off, <laughs> sucked the off the earth. So here's another paragraph. It's important and popular fact that things are always not what they seem. For instance, on the planet Earth, man has always assumed that he was much more intelligent than dolphins because he had achieved so much. Yes. The wheel, New York, wars, and so on. <laughs> While all the dolphins had ever done was muck about in the water, having a good time. But conversely, the dolphins had always believed they were far more intelligent for, than man for precisely the same reason. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a thought I've been thinking sometimes recently. What if we are actually the the the, the lowest evolved creatures on the yeah. earth, and the, all the things we think about are kind of you know the trees have already been there. The trees have yeah. already been there, yeah. and they're yeah. smarter than that. You Absolutely, know? the dogs have tried to communicate with words and yeah. like express feelings, and they're smarter than that. Yeah. Well, in that, the dolphins are actually like an alien race who leave the planet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The dolphins end up being a uh, spoiler alert. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's in the very beginning of the book, so it's foreshadowed. But, that... dude, they're fucking, I mean, dolphins are so incredibly evolved. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they basically speak to each other telepathically. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Through the large, whatchamacallit, distances. Yeah. Through the water. Yes. Back in the 60s, crazy. when we were trying to overthrow Fidel Castro, there was a, a, a one of our assassination plots was to train dolphins to go up to him with a bomb strapped to him and blow him up. On the land? No, like no, underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Underneath. Yeah, to swim up to him and they were going to, obviously they were going to sacrifice the dolphin. Suicide bomber. Dolphin. Suicide yeah. dolphin bomber. Fuck and up. they do, I don't know if it's seals or dolphins, but they do have actual animals that do are trained in mine removal yeah dolphins right yeah dolphins do that the and military. and dolphins yeah. often will protect a, a a human being that's in the water from a shark or something like yeah. that dolphins can team up to kill but them. have you seen the videos of dolphins hitting surfers too oh yes yeah <laughs> they'll fuck them up <laughs> they'll fuck them up oh yeah jump yeah. out of the water and just yeah. get them yeah and those noses are very hard oh yeah that would hurt hard nose really dolphin bad. yeah hard nose dolphin so what uh so so what drew you personally yeah. to that book, Jed? I um, love it. My dad gave me this copy, and it's like the full because it's a part of a series. It's a full five books. Mm. Um, I'm reading from the first book, the actual Hitchhiker's Guide. Oh, uh, I just like the, uh, I like the satire, man. I always liked it. Uh, my parents got me Mad Magazine when I was a kid. That was one thing that was always in the house. Yeah, I don't know if you guys listen. I read my brother, that my brother would always read that. Yeah. yeah. So I, Alfred E. Newman. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that satire, and my dad had a, a funny book called Science Made Stupid. That's just <laughs> like it's not really too in in the inside baseball when it comes to science, but it's very amusing. Um, so yeah, there's a couple more pieces I want to read real quick. One was just he has this quote about flying, and he says the there is an art to flying, and it relies in learning how to throw yourself at the ground. And miss, <laughs> which I like because it's it's a, it's kind of like a uh, if a tree falls in the woods doesn't make does a sound. Anyone hear it? Like if you're falling but never hit the ground, does that mean you're flying? It's a good point. Yeah, but good do question. Do you, do you think a bird thinks of it that way? I don't know. Do you think a bird knows it's <sighs> flying? Do you think a bird knows it's flying? Yeah, you do. Yeah, I think a bird knows its superiority. Superiority. Oh, yeah, or perspective. You think it actually feels superior? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that birds can't do that we can. Actually, we can fly. We fly in fucking airplanes. So we've taught ourselves to be birds. Right. <laughs> we've built it. we built our feathers. Yeah, yeah, and if you think about it, birds well, are evolved from dolphins. Or not dolphins, dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Flying dolphins. <laughs> yeah. And you could almost say, wow, the dinosaurs evolved ultimately, which is to fly. And maybe that's the ultimate evolution is the ability to fly. Mm-hmm. I Maybe. I mean, well, in the Yoga Sutras, they talk about the yoginis flying. Like in the like metaphysically or? I don't know. Yeah, metaphysically. Who knows what that means, you know, translate, you know, what the translation of that really means. But apparently they were so 
in tune with their body and the cosmos and all this crazy and the energy and all that shit. They could levitate. That they could levitate. Like David Blaine. David motherfucking Blaine, <laughs> yeah, y'all. Yeah. I have flying dreams sometimes. They, they, Me too. They feel yeah. incredibly real. Yeah, absolutely. It's I've kind of a that. levitation thing. I kind of float, and then I can, if I get high enough, I can just like zhoo, go down and just yeah. swoop. It's a good dream, a flying dream. I yeah. But then I'll have that flying dream, and then I'll do something, and then I have to get away, and I'm like, I can't fly now. <laughs> right. Or if you're even trying to run in a dream. I can never run fast in a dream. Yeah. It's always like, oh, or if you're fighting in a dream, I can never like make contact with the person I'm fighting with in the dream. I'm just like... Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, you're never... Like, just crushing. You're never, you're never disconnecting. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why that is. Yeah, but it would the, yeah, it's something about dreams where when there's that moment of what do you call it like a climax, it always seems to just keep going away. Yeah. 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 Especially wet dreams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just And then you wake up in a puddle of beyond. <laughs> um well if if human beings are going to evolve and be flying creatures, that's going to take millions and millions <laughs> yeah. of years. But see, we've already kind of <laughs> done it with our brains. Right. Which is why the, yeah. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. But the true limits of our natural um, selection are evident. If you jump off a building, you you don't fly. You, right. you land in a splat. Right. Yeah. We are land meat. So we just meat need to waffles. keep jumping. Until meat waffles. <laughs> Ew, that'd be good. We keep jumping until somebody is seconds. actually able to fly, and then they get to pass on their genetics. I think that's how it works. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. For the last piece, I'm going to paraphrase this little parable that's within the book. But this advanced race of, uh, I guess, you know, they're humanoid or whatever, they want to discover the meaning of life. So they build this computer called Deep Thought. (laughs) And they are very excited, and they say, hey, computer, can you figure this out? Can you figure out the, you know, the answer to life, the meaning of life, of the universe and everything? And the computer goes, okay, it's going to take me a couple million years. (laughs) They're like... Okay. <laughs> so they wait and they wait and they wait and they wait. And finally, one day, the computer's like, I got the answer. And the, everybody's excited. And the computer says, Hey, the answer is 42. <laughs> right. And uh, everybody's like, Well, what do you mean, 42? They're like, Well, w- what does that mean? What's that? the answer to life and everything in the universe is 42? And the computer's like, Well, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, That's bullshit, man. <laughs> So the computer says, well, I checked it very thoroughly, and that's the answer. I think the problem is that you never actually know what the question was, which I love. <laughs> because it's very true in life. How often do we look for answers without asking the actual question? Like what, you know, people are like, I'm, I want to be happy. And yeah. nobody says, well, what does that mean? Yeah, what, what makes what, me happy? What is being happy? Yeah. Yeah, walking around smiling all the time and yeah. just being like, This is amazing. Yeah. That's not supposed that. to be I'm what life happy. is. Yeah. 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 Pretending is that what happy. people want? Yeah. So I thought that was profound just because it is profound. It made me think of like questions and answers are like the yin and yang. yang. <laughs> yin and yang, y'all. The yin and yin and yang of like true knowledge is you need to know what questions to ask before you can really find the answer well that's the socratic method right is socrates wouldn't tell you what's going on he would just ask you a bunch of questions and through your own answers you would be shown your own path or whatever you know it's the essence of being mindful like questioning things around you and i don't think anybody here believes in flat earth theory but you know, no, man, this shit's a disc. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, when somebody makes that question, you go, well, I know that it's not, but do I know why? You know, and to just, you know, refresh your knowledge of why it's false is always good. Like, always be questioning. Yeah. ABQ, man, that's what they always say. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Or... Like from, uh, what's the famous movie? ABC, Always Be Closing, Closing. right, dude? (laughs) And we got a buddy, uh, Colin, who we're in our band with, and every time I suggest a lyric, he changes it. He says, yes, but how about this? And in that case, ABC applies to him, Always Be Changing. Yeah. So always be doing something. Yeah, so I I feel like questioning 
Yeah, I, it's, it's now come to my life philosophy of the questions are the important part. You got to keep questions. I love it. Keep man. going. Right. So Find true. your journey. Even when you go down the wrong path, the questions you learn more from them. You learn, oh, that's not the path for me. No doubt. If people, if you're just sitting around waiting for an answer for, to come to you, nothing's going to happen. You're going to get fucking forty two. Yeah, you're going to get forty two. <laughs> it's and, not going to mean anything. Right. Oh my ABQ, God. motherfuckers. It, this oh. has been another edition of Book Club. Nice. Ow. Great pick, Jed. Yeah, great pick. Oh, yeah. That, anyway, oh, sorry, I didn't even say it. That's by Douglas Adams. Douglas, Douglas Adams. Adams. Hitchhiker's pick, Guide to the Galaxy. Douglas Adams. There are movies and radio plays and TV shows about it, but I highly recommend the book yeah. because it's very dense. And um, it's it's just more fun to hear the voices in your head than it is to see. It's one of those books. I felt like all the adaptations don't always do it justice. Nice. So the convergence of cannabis and football and healing uh, took another step this week. Um, we talk about it a lot on this podcast about cannabis being an alternative to a lot of the opioids and injections and stuff that we had as athletes. And we've been kind of pounding the pavement as far as, hey, Doctors, NFL guys, come to the party. You know, open up your minds to what we're talking about. We have really no agenda here other than to talk about the truth and to help us heal as athletes and help former athletes heal as well. And last week, Eben, you had a, an interesting call that set in motion a particular set of events that ultimately led to Jason falling down the stairs last night. John, <laughs> and, John, uh, Nate. That was the culmination. It's John. John, John sorry, sorry. It's all right. We just met last night for the Jay. first time. I know. John. But, uh, Evan, tell us about that. <laughs> Sorry, John. I love you. It's good. Um, yeah, something That's you funny. said, though, man. I mean, us coming out and sharing our stories, what just blew my mind yesterday at this panel was these guys that I haven't met yet had were so loving and full of, like, gratitude for what I've allowed them to do. Um, like Jamie Brown... And even Irve, Damas. Yeah. You know? Yeah, let's not forget that Eben was part of the dam breaking when he came out before I met you and you had that article that said, you know, the headline was, I played stoned in the NFL. Yeah. Like that broke some barriers. That broke yeah. down some barriers. It definitely did. Uh, I mean, that let, was- Let's start, let's yeah. start at the yeah. call you got from the- uh... Yeah. So anyway- um, it started with last week I got a call from a current NFL team doc. And, you know, he basically said, Eb, I'm really interested in educating myself on cannabis and CBD. And, uh, you know, I've been following what you've been doing since leaving the league. And I think it's really awesome. Um, and I feel like you're a guy that I should talk to about it. I'm going to be out in L.A. next week. I'm going. Uh, coming to a health summit with Mike Tyson. Iron Mike. Iron motherfucking Mike. Champ. He's starting his own cannabis company. And I hadn't really heard of it. You know, I've been around. I've met a lot of the, the, the big players. I've met a lot of the people, you know, doing, you know, what I think is big moves in the, in the cannabis space, the med men's, the, the buds and roses, all those guys. And, you know, I'm like, Mike, I didn't, I had no idea who's was getting involved. So this team doc, he's like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to connect you with them. So I get connected via text and I start talking with the guy who runs, uh, Mike's business operations, a guy named Rob Hickman. And, uh, he says, Eb, you know, I'm really glad to be in touch with you. I'm putting on this health summit next week, and I need your help putting together a panel. And it wasn't, you know, I, I, I felt like I, I knew exactly what to do right away. I called up Ryan Kingsbury. I called up you first. You know, I made sure you were going to be available, made sure you were going to be in town. Um, and I just got all the A4C people rallied. And it was pretty amazing how the, everybody came together. Um, to get on this awesome platform with Mike Tyson, you know, you said it last night perfectly at the, at the after party, but 
you know, Mike is in America. We, we pride ourselves on creating some of the fiercest warriors, demigods the world has ever seen. Yep. And, you know, and Mike is really at the top of the list of, of those warriors and those legends. Yeah, I mean, coming from nothing. Coming from nothing. The and most explosive, lit- probably dynamic puncher fighter ever. Yeah. Muhammad Ali would, I guess, be the greatest, quote unquote. But Mike Tyson was, was the, the, I mean, I don't know, the best. You yeah. don't, I mean, that's a name you could say anywhere and everyone knows who that is. Right. You know, Mike Tyson. I mean, it, it. So as far as what we've been doing, you know, getting this this message out there about the medicinal power of cannabis, and how it can really help athletes heal during their careers, not only during their careers, but in their you know life after sports and their healing and finding themselves in life after their their professional sports career. Um, you know, this was a huge step, and especially. To add into the fact that, you know, we had all these, we had, mar- we had the, this was a, a marquee panel, in my opinion. You know, we had Mike, obviously, who hasn't, this was his first time really coming out and speaking about his, you know, how cannabis has helped him in his career. Um, we and had, it takes, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but it takes a lot of balls to do that for yeah, somebody who has totally. been in the pipeline as a hero yeah. and, you know, you, uh, athletes get saddled with a lot of the expectations of their industries. Yeah. And for to come out and say, hey, look, th- I actually prefer this other thing, this thing that's taboo. Yeah. You consider me a hero. I'm going to risk that and tell you that I like this thing that you may not like, you yeah. know, and you may not respect me for it, but I'm going to do it because it, it's so powerful to him and it's made such a uh, difference in his life. Yes. Yeah. It's really, I mean. So kudos to Mike Tyson for doing that. You don't, yeah. we haven't, like, there haven't been any superstars in any other sports to do that. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not yeah. like Tom Brady doesn't come out and say I smoke weed or no. anything like that. It's it's always guys who are don't have the name right? who feel comfortable doing it, but Mike Tyson is the name. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a he's a multi multi million dollar image. Yeah. Um, and so it was really powerful because we had these great great group of athletes. The whole all the A four C badasses. Athletes you know, for care. Athletes, athletes for, for care. care representing uh, hard athletes. Athletes. <laughs> athletes. Which was Nate. So. Riley. Wow, man. You, can't, you don't even know what I'm joking anymore, man. What do you mean? Do you man? remember that song we did, Athletes for Care? Athletes. Athletes. Athletes, athletes for care. care. Cool. That's all I wanted. Yeah. That's yeah, cute. It's good. It was good. Thanks, Jay. Um, John. Nate, Riley, Cote. We had Kyle Turley. We had Jamie Brown. Boss Rutten. Boss Rutten. This great kid, Co- Cody Garbrandt, who's... He's in the prime of his UFC career right now. Prime of his career. Going to be a... Probably going to be a champion he, here pretty soon. Right. And, and it was cool the way he introduced himself... <laughs> bless you. The way he Thank introduced you. himself was uh, former UFC champion and future UFC champion. Yeah. He got his belt stripped from him because he wasn't ready to fight after a gnarly back injury. Yeah. It's... Um that's fucked up. But Is that him, really what happened? Yeah, he was. He told me the story. Yeah. Wow. And and the fact that he's he's coming out and he's participating in this and yeah. putting himself around this conversation, it's it's really courageous of him. Absolutely. And man. and then I we need more athletes away. who are actually doing it, talking about it, not yeah. just the former athletes. So yeah. that's pretty awesome. And he's what, really really what's interesting. What's the rules for UFC and cannabis? Do they, they have one. They, they don't have one. So well. Wada, they do wada. They do wada, so, so CBD test. is good. Yeah, CBD is okay, and apparently they relax the okay. restri- restrictions in advance of a fight, and so um, I guess they, you know, wink, wink, sort of let them do it. But to the extent that um, it's allowable, it's not. Um, yeah. Nate, Nate Diaz got actually punished for hitting, mm-hmm. hitting the CBD pen after they, the Conor McGregor yeah. fight. So. They don't really know how to deal with it yet. But. Yeah, I don't think they have any idea, but it seems like it's a much different system because I was talking to Cody's brother last night about it. And the UFC, everybody's basically independent contractors, yep. all the fighters. Mm. So they come in and, you know, I, I don't know. They're their own know. businesses. Like they can do vape yeah. pens and all that stuff for like NFL guys could never do it. Yeah. Vape pen. Right. Yeah. Because we're really in the NFL chamber. Yeah. 
You know, we're not a guy who's being paid to come perform a service. Yeah, really. there's no union in UFC, is what you're saying. Yes, there's no fighters. There, there. Yeah, and there's been yeah. attempts to create one, and uh, it's been severely thwarted by Dana White and company. They don't want uh, any parts of the union. You're an employee; they're like an independent contractor. Yeah, That's kind of the difference between UFC. Yeah, and which actually shows that it's the probably the most fertile ground for cannabis to germinate in that industry. Yeah, because not only do they have Definitely. those lack of restrictions, but also the the head pounding that they get justifies them making a claim to have to use it yeah and when the science comes out i mean these guys are taking shots to the head the nfl can at least say well we've created concussion protocols to prevent you from taking those shots yeah. and, and all that uh, the equipment it's yeah better yeah exactly it's evolving <laughs> but there are no illusions about the fact that ufc fighters are getting fucked up getting punched in the face yeah kicked in the face so there's probably the more co- more compassion about the way they'll treat their injuries i guess yeah or more yeah, op- well, open-mindedness at least that's but, interesting yeah, I think it's possible. The UFC is more open-minded about injuries than the NFL. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because when the NFL, it's veiled in this, like, you know... These guys don't get hurt. These guys don't do anything fucked up. These guys are squeaky right. clean heroes. And it's all about this technical um, this technical pursuit. You know, it's the play calling. It's all these names. Like It's like the violence is veiled in this strategy. Yeah, it's interesting. That does, it's not just fighting. Yeah. You know, you're getting yeah. hit just as hard, but it's about getting a first down, whatever that means, you yeah. know, or, or clearing out the hole, you know. I mean, playing offensive line is just, it's a fucking fist fight every single day. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, so we had a great panel, and what made this panel even fucking better was that, you know, obviously it had the Mike, Mike's platform at his beautiful new facility out in El Segundo called the Tyson Ranch, um, which is really cool. Um, The Tyson brand looks cool. They got some really nice flour. Yeah. Very clean. And they don't grow it themselves, right? Yeah, they they, they, outsource it. Yeah, they outsource, find the best growers, and and slap a Tyson packaging on it. Which is the way to go, seems like. Yeah, I mean, As far as not having to get all the licensing and... uh, stuff like that and stay out of that part of it yeah um but then uh you know we had this nfl team doctor on the panel and then we had a guy named charlie lyons who's uh, fucking become my new best friend <laughs> hey charlie's awesome he's amazing and uh he's a former owner of the nuggets denver nuggets and the uh, colorado avalanche brought the avalanche to denver from uh quebec nice. I, I think and um, he said he helped build the Pepsi Center. Yes, in Denver, which is an amazing arena. And now he he's retired from that. He flies planes and he makes movies and TV. Yeah, he's a pilot. Yeah, he's and he's an awesome dude. Entertain and, entertainment industry. And he's really you know by the players for the players type of guy. It was I had some really interesting talks with him about. Um, The difference between NFL and NBA ownership relationship to the players. Yeah, you know he was he said that in the in the NBA, the owners really pride themselves on being, you know, supporting the players in any possible way they can. Right. You know, and and I said to him point blank, I was like, you know, that's a completely different attitude in the NFL. Yeah. You know, you do one wrong move as a player in the NFL and the whole fucking league turns its back on you. Yeah. Well, the whole collective bargaining agreement is designed to keep you fucking stupid and silent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not to not to let you flourish, not to let you explore your own individuality, not to let you create new opportunities for yourself off the field. It's all about controlling you and putting you in the tiniest possible box and then having no obligation to keep you around once you get injured. Yeah. You know? There are yeah. no protections in the CBA for players. It's, it's a pretty fucked up document. And in two years, they're going to negotiate a new one. And that's why the work we're doing right now is so important because yeah. we're empowering these current players with some knowledge that they can take to the fucking table yeah. and lay their dicks on the table and say, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, guys, yes. look at my cock. Yeah. I got some shit. <laughs> what? What? 
Well, that's uh, no, but I believe this that's is in, really uh, <laughs> Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. Yes, yeah, yes, layered, that's part of his strategy. Look, it's the, it's this thing I think about sometimes. You know, they want you to be a savage on the football field, right. an yeah. absolute savage. Yeah, and then you get off the field and in the boardroom, they want you to just fucking roll over and yeah. be a little dove. Yeah, it's yeah. time for them to be savages in the boardroom yeah, as well. Absolutely, you know yeah. what I mean. Unite I them, that. unite them to each other, and, and fucking take what you take what you deserve. Yeah, flip some tables. Really. No exactly. Doubt. Fucking flip them. Walk dude. the fuck out. You know? Jace too's like Amen. guys. <laughs> right, John? <laughs> Amen. Um so that was really cool. And you know, to have these conversations in front of a, a guy who could really make some change. Yeah. You know, a guy who um I'm just gonna keep his name off here just because I don't know the where he's at with it, but um he says he's cleared it with all his people. Mm. Um, You're talking about the the team, the doc. team doc. Yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah, and uh, for him to hear our stories, and I brought up the endocannabinoid system. Yeah, and he's I like, I didn't up, even know that existed. Yeah, he's like, I don't, that's I don't crazy. even know what that is. Well, most doctors don't. Does it that blew his does mind. that surprise you guys? No, it doesn't because that's it doesn't. What, that's what we've learned at these panels right. is that there's that Western doctors were not taught the endocannabinoid system in medical school, and so how 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 would they know? Well, one unless of their, re- you know, unless they, one of the, the detriments yeah. to many doctors, I feel, is they're limited by their science. Oh yeah, they're, you know, whereas we are more open, free-thinking individuals. Not that doctors aren't that, but when it comes to medicine, you know, they're blinded by science. They're inhibited by right. the information that th- is in their they're, ether. Their yeah. bubbles very interesting. My wife's a doctor, so I've experienced. We met when she was in residency, but kind of like the NFL, you're, I mean, there's in a bubble for like right. ten years of school and like yeah. information. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I've yeah, learned and you're quite not going to go out on a limb as a young doctor and be like, "Wait a minute, guys!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You're just. I mean, cause well, but maybe wait, some just like are. Maybe these conversations are starting to happen in medical right. schools. You know, because as I the, think they are because there's a lot of pressure on doctors to stop prescribing opioids. Yeah, yeah. and so they're looking for an alternative. At, the reason why we are are important in this conversation is athletes are very instinctual, yeah. and, and we kind of do what feels right and we go. You yeah. know what I mean? We don't overthink it, and and we have, and that has led us to cannabis, yeah. and has led us away from other medications. And so, in that regard, we can be learned from because we've kind of treated ourselves as the guinea pigs here, right? And we've done all these other things, and our instinct is taking us there. Yeah. yeah. And so I think doctors would be smart to think about it, what we're doing and to listen to us and, and they're starting to. Yeah. Which is cool. Because they want just the right answer. Yeah. That's all they're, they're looking exactly. for. Exactly. Yeah. And you guys might help them get there faster. Right. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, see. we put ourselves through hell <laughs> and we took a lot of shit and we know what those things did that we took and how them how they made us feel and what worked and what didn't. Yeah. You know, and that's a that's a really powerful story to tell, especially, you know, it's the perfect story for this movement. You know, it's what this what cannabis taking it to the next level. It, it needs the the people who have been through the, the incredible cancer survivors, you know, these families with the children who have the seizure syndromes, the military vets, man. Who are you know really starting to fucking? I think the military vets might get something done sooner with the VA than anything else, and I think that would be a big step. That would be a good push for the federal. Laws. Yeah, that would yeah. be a big step for federal descheduling. You know, because that's yeah. really where we have to be. We can't get this rescheduled to schedule two, or because fu- then it gets all bound up in different types of law legal codes. Yeah. You know, so that it's like inhibited by research and whatever. God knows what the fuck else. Hand it over to the pharmaceutical companies. You know, we can't do that. This is an agricultural crop at the end of the day, like Kyle said. Yeah. You know, he grows it himself, has the flour that he smokes. He takes the leaves, chops up all the trimmings, makes a nice tea out of it, you know. Um, I'm not sure you could probably get the seeds out of a cannabis plant, but I'm sure you could. Riley figure it eats out. the seeds. Yeah, no, I mean I eat hemp seeds, but I'm saying growing oh, it oh, yourself. Yeah. Right. If you could harvest those. So when you eat hemp seeds, what do you have? Do you just, like smoke them or cook them first, and they? Or how do you eat them? No, they're shelled raw. Oh, you just amazing. Cr- crunch them, just yeah. Chew them up. I just eat them. Nice. 
They're pretty amazing. Eat like you know a handful of them. Throw them in your salads, oh, wow. uh, shakes. They have a perfect omega profile, omega three, six, and nine. They're super high in protein. Do you ever get a little sapling sprouting out of your butt <laughs> or out of your poop? Just fucking chia poop? No, no. That'd be a good experiment. That'd though, be pretty cool. Yeah. I'll try that, Nate. Yeah. yeah. Can I do that in your toilet? Can Let's... I shit on your roof? <laughs> wow. Poop in the yard, actually. Poop in the yard. Sorry, John. Um, but no, it's yesterday. So yesterday was the panel. What do you think of it, man? I thought it was great. For those uh, at home, Eben moderated it, and he and he spent a week putting it together. He spent a lot of time with the Tyson Ranch people to to make that happen, and it was really good. I he think crushed he did a it. Great job. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah, you really did a really. good I don't good know job. what's up with those guys who are trying to play that video. But they should, <laughs> yeah, they should be fired. Yeah, yeah. fired. <laughs> it seems fired like those guys. it seems like par for the course, though. That we'll, there will be technical difficulties when you yeah. try to play a video at a certain time in a, in yeah. a program. It was you her know? first event. Yeah. Like Has it ever happened smoothly? I yeah, doubt it. Dude. But you but you handled it well and you started, you know, addressing other people in the panel to talk. Well, when that happened, I was like, I can't just sit here and I can't oh. just let this energy die, man. Right. True professional. You just kept it rolling. Yeah. Uh, however, rolling. however, the panel was being filmed. It wasn't in front of an audience, you know, who paid to go there or anything. It was being filmed and mic'd up and, and to be cut Produced. up at a later date. Yeah. And yeah. so it wasn't like yeah. the panels we've been to in the past where there's an audience there and it's at a certain time, you know. Yeah. It was more of a production. Yeah. So for this uh, for this footage right. that they're gonna cut up and make a nice little you know tape out of right not sure where that's going to be distributed yet when i find out you know i'll definitely let you guys know so that everybody can find it and watch it i think it'll be pretty awesome um because that's one of this guy rob rob hickman who's you know really supportive of the movement and sees the value in bringing guys like us in to to create this messaging yeah it's the messaging that's important yeah and um one thing we were talking about before is what we experienced yesterday and what you've experienced all week with those guys is something different than we've seen so far in the cannabis industry yeah uh we've we've been you know at this for a couple of years now and we've gone to a lot of panels we've gone to a lot of things and seminars and eben has been involved in the industry with met a, couple, a lot of people met a lot of people and you know they're Great people, a lot of great people, but a lot of them are kind of full of shit in some ways. And there's not a lot of money, or there hasn't seemed to be a lot of juice. So we'll be get we'll get flied out to flown out to Pittsburgh, you know, to be on some panel. But oh, well, can you pay for your own airfare? No. All right, well, I guess we'll pay for that. But can you pay for your own hotel? Yeah. Well, Jesus. Okay. Well, you got to put your credit card down for incidentals. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's just it was kind of a cheap type of thing. But there's a lot of money and there's a lot of exposure in, in this new thing, and it felt really cool to be around it yeah and i mean i think to that point you know we bring a lot of value to these things oh yeah you know like yesterday two doctors and an owner on the panel with you know nine athletes talking about their own experience with a certain type of holistic medicine and we're educating them on stuff yeah yeah do those guys come to you do they come to um were they connected with the tyson people how do those the docs yeah the doc and the owner were they uh the team doc he came to me and he was already connected to these tyson guys okay um the other doctor dr michael masterman smith who's cool um i met him at a women grow event that i spoke at and I've been interested in getting him involved with A4C for a little while, bringing him on the scientific advisory board, nice. and even get him on the po- on the pod. Yeah, yeah, he'd be, yeah. be fun podcast, to have on the pod for sure. You know, he's he's pretty relatable, and he's seen the shit under the microscopes. Yeah, you know the things that we're talking about. He's actually seen it in real time: cannabinoids destroying cancer cells, cannabinoids protecting brain cells. He's seen that shit. Right. You know, so. Um, he's, he's super supportive of what we're doing. And then Charlie is a partner with Tyson. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's, he's a business partner. He is, you know, um, and he's a huge supporter of, of the, this movement. You know, he is, he's really a by the players for the players type of guy. Um, and he's interested in, in really being, 
a, a strong support system for what we're doing. It seemed like it. He was very enthusiastic. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. Everyone, everyone knows Mike Tyson's story. And so everyone knows what he's been through, you know, and yeah. to now hear him say, okay, I'm behind this thing. Yeah. It carries so much weight. Yeah. It's because, huge. because we all, uh, whatever you think about Mike Tyson and his legal troubles or whatever, I think everyone sympathizes with Mike Tyson in yeah. a way. He's like, you know, he was, he's a, ch- he's an American child who like took on the energy of so many people and was and, taken and advantage of, was taken advantage and of and again. had to fight. He was put yeah. in there and you fight now yeah. and do this for all of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was the best and he yeah. took it all on himself and you don't get that for free. Yeah. You have to pay for that, you know? Yeah. And so he went through so much mm. physically, psychologically, um, with his family, with his friends. And so to have him be on the other side of that and find some peace through this plant and now kind of want to put himself in this arena, he doesn't have the language yet to do it because he hasn't been thinking about it long enough. And, you know, that's where you come in. Yeah. But like, just just the fact that he's there, it's just like, it's really, it's really powerful. Super powerful. I was pretty uh, just in awe of him just to be in his presence. I, um, yeah. Played a lot of Mike Tyson's Punch Out as a kid. Yeah, we, uh, you, yeah, he did. You really so we Nate kicked had the, the best panel opener. off. Yeah, it was pretty good with introductions by everybody. <laughs> and Nate fucking Nate was last before me. And dude, I mean, tell the joke you told. Okay, well, I was thinking about this the whole time because, like, you know, obviously you guys listen to the pod. You know, I like to crack jokes and stuff. And uh, and so everyone was doing their introduction and talking about their path to cannabis. And I kind of have that part down as far as talking about it. But I really wanted to tell this joke. Um, but I didn't know if it was the right situation because there's a lot of cameras on and everyone's around. Definitely the right situation. But when it came yeah. around to me, and I was like, I thank Mike for. Um, for having us and I said alright I'm going to tell you guys a number do you guys know what this is 007-373-5963 does anyone know what that number is and everyone's like no I'm like that's the code you have to punch in on Nintendo's Mike Tyson's punch out to fight Mike Tyson I love it dude. In 1987 Brilliant. I still remember that it's, it's still in my head it'll the be there forever the place went nuts Mike yeah. loved it yeah. I uh, I mean he laughed his ass yeah. off dude. I was like uh, who says stoners are forgetful you know, yeah, because it was powerful, man. Yeah, I just uh, I'm just happy I made Mike laugh, man. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's he's such the epitome of what you guys talk about, which is okay. Up until you know you're you're out there, battle, 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 always battle, and right. then when you're done, everybody's like, why is he so angry? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like no, he was conditioned. That was what everybody wanted from him for all his life was to fight, fight, fight. Yeah, and now you're surprised that he's not yeah. uh, a stable monk right you know like it took him a while and yeah yeah he struggled with the opioids and pain and drinking and yeah, yeah it is good to see him like back yeah and imagine yeah. just the just the pressure of society just idolizing you or feeling a certain way about you so everywhere you go you got to have you got to deal with that Right. You know, people want to talk to you. Tough guys want to challenge you. Yeah. You know, girls want to, whatever it might Who's be. Who's challenging Tyson? I hope nobody. Oh, I think Fuck it happens dude. fucking his whole life. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. He'd be like, I've I, seen interviews I, with him where he's like, yeah, guys want to, you know. Fight me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'll take a punch from the champ. You know, I could knock you out. Yeah, of course. I mean, that I shit, don't think so, dude. That's a one punch. Yeah, I've seen, dude. It, it happens take. to those guys. Well, he's so yeah. iconic, I'm, no, I'm and I'm sure, gonna say like, I'm sure, I'm sure that but you, happens. But yeah, you're yeah. right. It does. Of course, it does. I would There's fuck. A bunch of, I, God. And right how now. do you hold yourself back? You know, and how do you just kind of like try to be gracious about all that energy? Yeah. Um, he probably just wanted to shrink away, and some of the substance abuse issues he probably had was due to that. Yeah. Um, but it was really awesome to be in his presence. Yeah, he was super cool, man great energy i was really stoked to see him smiling and he was he was really i think touched by the group of guys that had come together for that yeah to do that with him you know? well, what was cool is that you got a lot of different guys from different athletes or different sports different body types different stories around cannabis different ages different ages yeah. um 
you know, Jamie was talking about how after his career, it really helped him with, with depression and some of the yep. head problems he was having. Whereas Cody's a 25 year old kid in the prime of his career. He's using it for a different reason. You know, he's not yep. depressed. He's yep. trying to train, yep. you know, he's trying to recover. And then you got, um, um, Riley, who's just really, really knowledgeable about it as a yeah. whole plant remedy. He's eating the seeds. He's talking about omega sixes and nines. Shit, I don't understand. <laughs> but like, he's done the research. He's yeah. got the, he's got the words for it, you yeah. know. And so this plant touches people in different p- parts of their lives. And um, I thought we all really brought in a complete picture. Yeah. All of our different perspectives. Yeah, and it's really important to have that because the plant is so complex. Yeah. And we were talking about that with a doctor. It's like there's so much research that needs to be done as far as if you just look at a football team, you got guys from, you know, 180 pounds all the way up to 350 pounds. They have different blood types. They have different types of metabolism. They have different position-specific drills. Muscle fibers. Yeah, all that. So does the same kind of cannabis work for all of them? Yeah. Or do you need different strains for them? Um, And... NFL clubs are worried about you're saying you know these they don't want their guys to be high yeah. on, in the game tomorrow. So do they need a different strain than the guys who are actually on injured reserve versus the guys who are done with their career? You know what I mean. And so there's so many things that need to be studied, but the anecdotal stories and experiences from guys is how you start. Yeah. And it was cool to hear, hear see that team doctor just listening, and he was, seemed like he was absorbing it. I think he was really blown away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys know your shit, bottom line, and it's super impressive. Um, and I'm most excited about what's going on next. I mean, this is just a start, right? Yeah. So, I, mean, I think is, that was yeah. kind of our last night. We're just like we're having a good time. Clearly, I had a great time, better than everybody else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's for another day in time, but. That was kind of like. I feel the, like you got to tell the story. Yeah, it sounds like you have a dip in your mouth, but you don't. I, I kind of do, though. I think really I have swollen. a dip. I got a fat lip because Mike and I got into it a little bit. No, I'm kidding. Let's just say there was an open bar, number one. Open bar. Open weed bar. And an open weed bar. And I have two. never seen one of those. Yeah, right. I live in New Mexico. Yeah. There's not an open weed bar <laughs> yeah. there. There was, uh, yeah, there, Anyways, was, there was a group of young yeah. ladies grinding it up and rolling, and you could Pre-rolls. just walk up and just. Get I didn't up. even have to even go over there. It just kept like coming. coming. This, it was just this like, oh, here it is. This is not a fantasy that they're talking about no this was the after party this is a reality yeah. to yeah. hear everybody so blown away by that i feel so lucky because yeah. i've been to a few of those parties now where there's a weed bar oh really yeah yeah i've been a, and been to a handful nice and that's what happens big time. The yeah, yeah in california big especially time. too because it's it's <laughs> it's really happening in california yeah it's like that's and what... yesterday was really this interesting or last night was this interesting convergence of some it was an really inter- big like Hollywood feel it, to it. It was an interesting like inflection point. I thought you know like it's just like on the start of this yeah. kind of next step because you guys have, like you said have you been in the grind the last you know few years if not longer and not kind of intertwining these worlds. And that's where the athletes I think really you guys have that awesome voice because you can really help it break down the stigmas and get it over to the mainstream right via Hollywood as well. It was exciting to see. Well, and because I, there's such a stereotype around people who smoke weed being losers. Yeah, you guys and are when f- someone who's not obviously not a I loser. I love that. I'm like, well, I know fucking the one percent of one percent of athletes that yeah. fucking smoke it on a right. daily. And so it's like, that obviously dispels yeah. that whole myth right there. You know, that's it really that, does. That's that's a that's bullshit. But I'm no yeah. doctor, neither are you. But we know what we know. You know what you know. You know that's what right. feels right. And mm-hmm. you guys are like stewards of your bodies too. And you, and, you, yeah. and you really have to be to make it to that level, which well, allows you to. You know, have to be your kind of your own doctor at some level. I, right. mean, I wish I was that in tune with my body, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one of the points it's I was. It's a process, man. Yeah. yeah, I was making that point yesterday. Is is that to me when I played football, my football career was the most important thing to me by far. Had to be. That's what I cared about. And so, the re- if I was smoking cannabis, it was because I thought it was going to make me a better football player, essentially, or make me you know calmer, heal better. I would not put that in jeopardy. And uh, most athletes, I think, feel the same way about their careers. Yeah. You know, they, they care about their careers, number one, and, and, if, and if they find something that works for them. Yeah, I mean, I think he can play high. Just look at J.R. Smith, man. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about dialing, like, the right strain. Yeah. 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 you got to <laughs> find the right strain. Hell, I did it. But I, you know what? That's great. <laughs> that's great, yeah. Using cannabis, like smoking a joint before I drove to the stadium to get ready for a game. I mean, by the time I stepped on the field, I wasn't fucking... No, because you got to be there two and a half hours early (laughs) anyway. It's three hours later you're playing. You were feeling good, though, I was feeling good. I was feeling, you know, in my body and feeling loose and ready to roll. 
I cool. never, I never consumed. How many like game. heaters do guys smoke before games or halftime? You know oh I mean? my like, god! I mean the know, stories the whole, yeah, from the crazy. golden and era. It's on the like, sidelines, you see yeah, like dudes in the locker room at halftime just puffing cigs. Kenny for, Stabler uh, just fucking yeah, smoking another day. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. unbelievable. I remember. I can't uh, imagine that. I remember like even in the nineties or whatever. I saw Deion Sanders eating a hot dog and M and M's on the sideline. Wow. Yeah, I mean, what I mean, the I mean fuck? It, it, is that really better for you than weed? Yeah, Definitely sugar. not. <laughs> Definitely not. Dion can do what he wants, I guess. Yeah. Um. Well, where are we going from here, brother? I don't know. I feel like that's a good. That's a good. Pod. That's a pretty solid pod. It's I 50 mean, fifty minutes. Nice. Yeah. Oh, this is the part in the pod, John. You can uh, oh, you can jump in on. Help, help guide me, Nate. I will. Thanks for coming, Trevor Noah. Yeah. Everybody at home. We're not just talking about everybody here. We're talking about everybody at home. Uh, and Gandalf. We said, go. everybody did a really good job on the pod. June 1st. Everybody did a really good job on the pod Summertime's approaching Everybody did a really good job on the pod Yeah I said everybody did a really good job on the pod Hey man Evan Yo You did a really good job on the pod Man, thank you guys so much No problem, dude Nathan yeah. did a really good job on the pod. Oh man, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. And Chad, yeah. you did, did a really, really good, good job on the pod. Really good. Thank you. And John, Jay Stu, really good job on the pod. Really, really, Thank you. really it was good a pleasure job to be here. on the pod. Everybody did a really good job. Everybody did a really good job. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. everybody did be sure to check out our website, mindfulwarriorpodcast.com. You can find all the latest episodes, get Nate's books, links to our social media, our Instagram, at mindfulwarriorpodcast, Twitter, at mindfulpod, Facebook, at mindfulwarriorpodcast. Check out our organization, Athletes for Care. We're doing some great things. We're moving. We're moving this thing. We're moving the chains. Check out at athletesforcare.org. Keep doing your thing, everybody. Keep meditating. Five minutes a day. Just give it to yourself. You'll love it. Keep eating right. Keep exercising. Keep being mindful. We love you guys. Don't forget to check your testicles for testicular cancer as well. <laughs> That'd be good. Easily preventable form of cancer. Check your test levels too. We love you guys. Peace.